got to do to get the win this afternoon? Well, first of all, don't feed the fire. We're talking turnovers. Amen. Florida State reacts to turnovers like a shark reacts to blood in the water. Duke cannot afford to give up the football in the first quarter. And Duke has got to get some first downs. Got to move those chains. Got to make uh, your good possessions, keep it alive, and keep your defense off the field. Good measure if they're moving it is if numbers show up in Montgomery and Flowers category. Well, these two guys need to blow up. Combined, 20 receptions, 333 yards, only one touchdown. They've got to step up. Florida State deferred their option. Duke will receive the opening kickoff. There's Sebastian Janikowski, 33 kickoffs, 27 have not been returned. Ben Erdeljack and Scotty Montgomery are deep, and we are underway in Jacksonville. And this one will roll out of bounds, and Duke will get a rare break, get out to the 40-yard line on the out-of-bounds, and get a chance to get good field position for that first drive. And, of course, as we told you, Bobby Campbell is going to be coming out at quarterback for the Duke Blue Devils. Campbell on the season. 21 out of 54, 38%. He has one touchdown. He's thrown two interceptions. He's a junior from Hicksville, New York. Nine career touchdown passes. He's got good size, 6'5", 215, and he's got a big job here today. It's at the 35-yard line on the penalty. Richmond Flowers split wide to the left and wide right. Actually, four wide outs here, Doc, in his first uh, possession for Duke. And they'll hand off to Dwayne Epperson, and Epperson is going nowhere. He's grounded there at the 34-yard line. Jerry Johnson on the tackle. Let's take a look at our Geico starting lineup. Scotty Montgomery and Richmond Flowers, the key of this back and receiver set group, because they've got to get some numbers, as we said, Doc. And up front, you know, that is a good point. But Fleming and Lynch, two guys had a lot of pressure on them to contain the tackles of FSU. Second down and 10. And second down 10 call goes to Epperson again. This time it's for positive yardage out to the 38-yard line. Corey Simon at the heart of that. And uh, that's a good place to start with our defensive lineup. Corey Simon, the Brian Piccolo winner, and an All-American with some great help and with Jerry Johnson and Jamal Reynolds and David Warren. And the linebackers quick as ever again. Foley Jennings, you look at Allen, they lead the team in tackles. And, and the secondary, great cover guys across the board. Edwards, Gibson, Key, Thomas call their names a lot today. Third down now coming. No score. First possession. And seven yards to go for the first down. His first pass of the day. Campbell and pressure. Throws it. And almost now intercepted. Intercepted by Allen. And he's brought down at the 49-yard line of Duke in a pass that maybe Campbell shouldn't have thrown. Well, there goes so much for the analysis. You can't give the ball up in the first eight minutes. The first possession, third play. They do it. Brian Allen now second in leading the team in tackles, and then he comes up with an interception. Let's take a look at it. Now you watch the eyes. First mistake, telegraphing, and then under pressure. Sometimes it's best to just eat it. And then great athleticism. Once again, a trademark of Mickey Andrews' group on defense. Brian Allen with the interception. That's his first career. Campbell thinks this one over. 13 opportunities. Seven touchdowns. The teams turned it over. That's North Carolina last week. They were down by four touchdowns before the first commercial break. Here's Wenke. Throws to the flats, and it is complete to Lavernius Coles. And Coles moves upfield to the 35 yard line. It's a gain of 14. Let's go back to our Geico starting lineups. And take a look at the backs and receivers for the Seminoles. Dan Kendra and Travis Miner will get traffic in the backfield. Thomas and Williams are two big tackles. Strong, got good feet. First and ten at the 35-yard line. Wenke. Chris Wenke back at quarterback. Stands in with a short drop. The Coles again complete at the 25. Second straight pass to Lavernius Coles, tackled by Darius Clark. And it's going to be a gain of another 10 yards on the play for Florida State. Lavernius Coles out there with Peter Warwick that time. The first down for the Seminoles. They're moving the chains, trying to take advantage of this turnover. Goes to Temple. You know, how do you deal with this in practice? If you do, now you got it. It's right in your face, and you have to deal with it. And coverage all around on four wide receivers. Peter Warwick is the inside receiver at the top of the three you see to the top of your screen. Wenke is throwing to Warwick behind him. He was wide open. Clark was five yards back. 
Now that's strange. Pass intended for Peter Warwick. Ryan Stallmeyer had good Very pressure on the quarterback that time. And Wenke threw before the break of Peter Warwick and behind him. But no pressure on Peter Warwick. I mean, I don't know why Darius Clark went away from that. I mean, he's a guy you want to get up and press and get around. No huddle for Florida State out of the shotgun. Winky there with Miner. His lone setback. Four wide receivers, two to each side. Over the middle, it is complete to Travis Miner, and he's brought down at the 14 yard line. It's a gain of 11 on the play. It brings up another first down for Florida State. Ryan Stallmeyer in on the tackle for the Duke Blue Devils. Steve, he really did a pretty good job because he kept everything right in front of him. That's all you can do. Florida State makes a living on yards after the catch. Now let's watch this. You talk about Star Marcia, it's pretty good position. Now you want to get your people to the point of attack and you want to converge. First and 10 at the 14, two wide outs, Dugans and Warwick. Winky changing up. He has Kendrick, Kendra rather, and Miner in the backfield. This is Miner on the pitch. Headed to the corner. He'll turn it up at the five. And he's close to a first down at the four yard line. Kevin Lewis in on the tackle along with Eric Jones. It'll be close enough, it might be close enough for a measure. It's really scary, man, when you start to go right after the, their best players. There you see the, the void right in there. Tackle on tackle, helmet on, and watch this. So to square up the shoulder, there's Warwick. There's the Heisman candidate right outside, giving you effort on the edge. On second and one, Kendra, the fullback, gets the first down to the three yard line. And Florida State wasting no time in seven plays. They move from the 49 down to the two yard line. And they have first and goal there, trying to take advantage of the turnover. Kevin Lewis, along with Chris Holmes, in on the tackle. Holmes had hoped to be playing on the other end of the field some. First and goal on the three. Before having to defend their own red zone. First and goal at the three. Wanky back to throw. Wanky over the middle as a receiver complete. It's Warwick for the touchdown. Lamar Grant covering, but Peter Warwick has scored through the air for the third time this season. You see it on film, and you just don't get a good take for it. And you see it up close. Might be Peter Warwick. Second pass in his direction, and the first that he caught was for a two-yard score. And that's what we have on the board right now. 7-0 Florida State over top-ranked Duke, or top-ranked, or uh, rather, against Duke, which has yet to pick up its first ACC win this season. Now you pick your poison. They blew Duke, squandered great field position. They may not get that again, the way he kicks off. Get a chance, and I don't think they're going to get it this time. Deep in the end zone, out of the end zone, over the head of Richmond Flowers. And it'll come out to the 21st and 10. Sebastian Janikowski, 35 kicks. The Domino's Bowl Blitz sweepstakes is here. You and a friend could win an all expense paid trip for four college football bowl games in five days. That is quite a lot of football, including the national championship game January 4th. 2000 in New Orleans. Register online today at jpsports.com or send the form that'll be found on all Domino's Pizza Box Talkers. Domino's Bowl Blitz Sweepstakes, your chance for a football fan's dream trip. First and 10, Duke, they're at their own 20. Three wide receivers to the wide side of the field, four total in the formation. And out of the shotgun, Bobby Cannon. First pass was thrown for an interception. Steps up, fires, and overthrows. Looks like Kyle Moore, and he got hit. And hit hard by Sean Key. Key on the coverage. Well, again, let's watch the eyes of the quarterback, and we'll find out what happens with the receiver. Whenever you go down the middle, down the pipe, that's hitting it right down the pipe there. You're in trouble. And you got to give him a lot of credit because Moore never flinched. Now let's watch again the eyes of the quarterback. See, you telegraph the message. So that gives a free safety. I mean, he just licks his chops. Wiped up Kyle Moore. Three wide receivers again to the short side of the field and up the middle it goes to Emerson. And Wayne Emerson from the state of Florida gets a first down after the 35 yard line. Emerson actually, he's from Falls Church, Virginia. And Corey Simon, all ACC and first team All American, makes the tackle. 15 yard gain for Duke. Well, that's the key to, to any success you want to get against the tackles. They're so quick, they charge up field. If you can pop right at them, you do <laughs> increase your chances. Carl Franks lamented to us uh, the lack of a ground game for Duke, being able to balance what they can do in the air. Out of the shotgun, here comes Campbell, and his pass is deflected by, you guessed it, Corey Simon. And a 
holding call is going to be flagged in here on top of that. And Jamal Reynolds had a real nice rush from his right side. Campbell, you watch, you can see hands are just high. You want to keep the hands inside the framework of the numbers. First and 20. Shovel pass ahead. Epperson. Epperson gets some running room. And he's up again. Back to the 35, which is the original line of scrimmage. The 10 yard gain when Corey Simon brings it down for his third tackle of the afternoon. You look at Duke, they're only averaging 50 yards a game on the ground, but well, what he just showed us there, Dwayne, he squared his shoulders up. You can't horse around. This is not a, a, a game to be cute. You got to square up and you better scat and get out of there. That was a very, very, very well done. Second and 10, gain of 10 on the play. You, you, there's not many, there aren't. Many mysteries to what Florida State does defensively. They just do whatever they do well. They've got a blitz on, a rash. Duke picks it up. Campbell on the throw to Ertel Jack, and good coverage on the play Campbell's by Ke Clevin, Clevin Thomas. Thomas. Then Ertel Jack, Derek Gibson defensively. And Derek Gibson also on the play. Ben Ertel Jack, the intended receiver. Ball was in the vicinity. Yeah. Man, you, you have to help your quarterback, and that was a good idea. Good throw, but that Derek Gibson, you talk about a maniac. I mean, this guy gets all over the field, has great range, right in line with the great uh, seminal safeties, and he is just a thorn in your side in the run game. They're so deep at that position, too. Mickey Andrews chooses the starters on Friday. He says, I got four guys who can go at cornerback, and I'm making a decision based on practice. The draw play. Straight ahead, and it is going to be taken by Devin Pierce, the junior from Boca Raton, Florida. But we've got a flag on the play. Nine, and now here comes the adventure. Brian Morton from Winter Haven, Florida. His job is to keep it away from Peter Warren, who's back in punt formation, the leading punt returner in the entire country in NCAA Division I football. And Kyle Moore, the left release man, has got to get down there and be a factor. Morton averages 40 a kick. It's a hang time, and Warwick will get a chance to return it at the 24. Upfield, good coverage by Duke, and they flatten him at the 33 yard line. It's a they'll start from their own 32 yard line. Kendra at quarterback has Travis Miner set up there, four wide outs. Warwick to the bottom of your screen on the inside. Wenke steps up and nice tackle on the play made by Charles Porter, the sophomore from Columbia, Maryland. Let's go back to our Geico starting lineups. We didn't get a chance to set that offense. Field. I'm going to let you deal with that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great move for Duke, though, just to get some pressure. Second down pass is complete. A lot of experience at that point. Third down and nine. Florida State leading here, seven to nothing. Chris Wanky out of the shotgun. Wanky has a release in minor, but he's going deep, and it is almost caught and dropped by Jermaine Stringer. Covering on the play, Darius Clark with Ronnie Hamilton and Lamar Grant. Well, you know they're going to take a, a shot at it. I mean, that's the Florida State. But that's a great job again by Grandy. You watch this. The pressure early on, I think, is always a factor with quarterback. Maybe you speed up a bit. Ball is there. Looks nice at this point. Great adjustment. At this point, jump ball. Nearly a spectacular catch. Oh, Stringer almost came up. Here's Keith Cottrell, junior from Orlando in punt formation. And he gets off a of beauty. Hurdle Jack is driven back to his 22. He dodges one tackler. Now gets upfield. Nice return, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 37-yard line. A flag, however, on the play. And there is Cottrell going off the field after a beautiful punt. Jamal Reynolds on the tackle in punt formation, but let's see what the flag is, and it's back at the line of scrimmage. It'll be a personal foul roughing the kicker. He's getting high fives. Acting job. He did get hit, but I mean, you got to lay a little extra on it. Here's Jim Knight. Personal foul. Personal foul. Roughing the Ruffing kicker, the on, the kicker defense. on the defense. First down. First down. Man. Let's see it once again as Cottrell goes back. Now you get a chance to stop them, and then you have this. Now, see, you can't aim at the punter. You have to go where the ball will be. The launch point, see? And then you just can't, especially when you come right up the gut. 
still with all that pressure, he uncorked a 40 plus kick. Yeah, that's a, that's a gift. You don't want to, as you said, Doc, don't feed the fire. And Duke has just provided another wood on the fireplace. And Bernius Coles takes Chris Winkie's pass. Down to the 45 yard line, Duke. It's going to be a gain of six on the play. Well, the first offense possession interception, the second they had a holding penalty and a procedure. Now you get a flag on special teams, and uh, again, you keep the monster alive. Second down and four. Minor in motion. Throwing to that direction to Warwick on a little screen. Out on the corner, and he gets the first down inside the 40 at the 39 yard line. And let's get down to the sidelines for something about Lamar Grant from Mike Hogwood. Well, Steve, you talked about him being suspended for three games. This is a veteran senior who started 27 games in his Duke career. He's been on the scout team all season until Tuesday of this week. Coach Carl Frank says he's really been impressed with his attitude, the way he handled the suspension. He's back. How much is he playing today? Well, he's played every snap on defense so far, and he's on every special team today as well. Well, broken up one ball. First and ten, Florida State at the Duke 39. Wenke to the flat. Warren at the 30. Duke's pass one tackler. Has some interference in front of him. Touchdown, Florida State. Lavernius Coles with a great block at the 10. Into nothing over Duke. 7.36 left to go on this first quarter. Peter Warwick catching his second touchdown pass of the day and the 31st of his career. And look at those. These are updated numbers. 169. He came in with 166. He has a chance to be the ACC's all-time leading receiver if he catches a little over seven a game. And second all-time at FSU in receiving yards as well. Peter Warwick put his name up there in Heisman consideration. Joe Hamilton did a pretty good job in that direction Thursday night. Oh yeah. Sebastian Janikowski kicked it through the uprights. <laughs> from 75 yards and it will not be returned his third kickoff of the afternoon the man from Poland who came over really doc when you take a look at what Duke had accomplished defensively in that last series they had stopped them and had to stop up. had to stop had give it up, up. Yeah. violated everything it takes right now to be good and compete against the Seminoles Epperson is the lone setback three wide receivers to the wide side of the field Epperson Getting some good yardage, and Duke has done pretty well on the ground here so far this afternoon. Out to the 25 or 26 yard line. It's the only chance you get if you go right at them. You can't get outside on the edge. That's out. Forget about it. But if you run right at those great tackles, if you catch them on their way to the quarterback, yeah. you might get a crease. <laughs> that's exactly where they're headed. Second down and five. More. Montgomery and Erdl Jack to one side. Flowers to the bottom side. Campbell changing up. Three step drop going for Flowers. And he runs into Mario Edwards, who was covering on the play. And there's a flag down. Could be interference on Edwards, who held Flowers from getting behind him. Mario Edwards, a senior from Gauthier, Mississippi. Thing with Mario is such a big guy. 6'2, 195. There's a break for Duke. Yeah, it is. Another break. See if they capitalize. Now watch it now. Let's see the check. For the decent release. There's a the first bit of contact. Let's see if they hit again. Yeah. See you right there. If the ball's in flight. Good call. So the pass interference moves the chains out to the 37 yard line. The guilty party, Mario Edwards. Six career interceptions, and you want to make sure that Flowers didn't get back. Three wide receivers again. Setback is Emerson. They've run out of this. They won't this time. Campbell in the grass, and he goes down. And it is Jamal. He's number two in the ACC in sacks this year. And Campbell goes down for the first time this afternoon. What's the flag here? Prior to the snap, hit ball, false start on the offense. Five yards, first down. So, false start for Duke. It'll be first and 15. Take a look at our Cross Creek College football scoreboard today. East Carolina Pirates with a stirring win over Miami. Oh, boy, were they outstanding or what? The leading Army today. Michigan, a big, big 10 game. Michigan State with a one touchdown lead in the first. We'll have others as the afternoon rolls off. First and 15 for the Blue Devils. 
trailing 14 to Big rush is on. Screen pass to Epperson. Epperson trying to get his way for, away from Bradley Jennings and is brought down there by Campbell's pass complete to number 33, Dwayne Epperson. Reggie Durden. Bradley Jennings. That's a pretty good job to get it going. You want to take advantage of their rush. A little X game up front by the Seminoles. That's pretty well done. Maybe just a second off in that. You got everybody where you want. Now watch how quickly they react. They make up for it, get off blocks, and then they get to the point of attack in a hurry. Gain of three. Brings up second down and 12. Remember they had the penalty on the first play after the first down. Flowers and Montgomery split to the wide side of the field. Hurdle Jack to the short side. Out of the shotgun, Campbell. Big rush is on. He gets rid of it. But you can't blame Campbell for that. Not because, at all. No, Jamal Reynolds Bobby was Campbell in the back of his helmet. Not at all. And that's the only time you will get. And watch how this converges. This is the manhood coming to the point of attack. All of those people there, man, that's a function at the junction. That kid stood in there like a soldier and got the ball out. You got to have great catches by your receivers in a game against Florida State. It will not be perfect. The ball may not be right on your numbers. You got to climb the ladder. Not with Warren, Reynolds, and Simon. <laughs> Breathe the diamond throat. <laughs> Third down and 12. Duke down by two scores. We're in the first quarter here in Jacksonville. Campbell lets one fly over the middle. Almost intercepted by Mario Edwards. Intended on the play for Ben Erdeljack. If it hangs in the air, it's theirs. That's a pretty safe rule of thumb. If it hangs in the air, it belongs to them. There you get a little burst, a little seam route. Very nice route, but he's going up against zone. So at that point, you got to throw it in there underneath. You got to get quick, or you're going to have that happen. And when you're throwing to spots, your defenders yeah. have a better beat yeah. on it than you do. You got to throw when the kid's in his break. Wharton now trying to slow down Warwick. At the third, no, oh, no. Nope. That's oh. Durden on the return, and Durden fumbles, reverses direction. Look out. And gain speed. Watch out, Morton gets blocked. Durden gets turned and finally tackled at the 32. And the tackle by Dan Umbel. But Morton's kick is returned. Excellence question over the past four seasons. Which two ACC teams rank one and two among all Division I-A programs in total defense? If you know the answer, log on to ACC.com with the correct answer before next Saturday's telecast, and you'll be entered to win two tickets to the ACC Bowl Champion game. And uh, stay tuned. We'll have that answer for you before the end of the game. So it's an open book test, essentially. <laughs> First and ten at the Duke 32. Chris Wenke. After the 37-yard punt return of Reggie Durden to Travis Miner, a great open field tackle by Ronnie Hamilton, three yards downfield at the 29-yard line. And a beautiful punt return set it up. You know, There's Ronnie Hamilton. Let's say, you know, you say great tackle, and you can't emphasize that uh, even more because if you don't get him down, they're out of here. And, and it's not just one guy. It appears to be all of them. <laughs> Second down. And six. Dugans to the top. Warwick to the bottom. Lanky to the air and through the middle. And he was looking for Warwick who had double coverage, but there's a flag down. Eric Jones and Lamar Grant double covered on Peter Warwick, but there was contact there and a flag went down. But he had a chance at the interception. I'll take a look, another look at it. Great uh, blitz pickup. Dan Kendra. Former quarterback who had a nice job at fullback. Pass interference against Duke. Let's look at it again. Now you see Jones in your screen, a little play action fake. Good block and see Chris Combs there. Boy, great blocking up front. I think that's Whitaker. I don't know. See, I thought Jones had a hand on the ball. Now at that point, there is contact there. Okay, yeah, there's from contact Grant. there. Yeah. There's contact on Grant before the play. I'll tell you what, you talk about a young man who is happy to be back in uniform. That's Lamar Grant. Well, it's a 15 yard penalty and a first down. Inside the 15, down to the 13. Here comes the pitch to Miner. Miner up over the 10 and is finally brought down at the 7. First shoulder threw in there by Darius Clark. There's Chris Combs in the ready position on second down and three. All of the seven and a half yard line. 
changing up. And Warren to one side, Dugans to the other. And off to on the delay to Miner, and Miner looks like he's got enough for the first down. Steinbaugh tripped him up. Delamalor and Clark finish him off. Kevin Lewis and Eric Jones make the snap. That's another first down for the Seminoles. You talk about Whitaker again. Here you see Combs, and here you, there you see Whitaker. Now watch it. This guy gets inside. He's strong. See how his hands placement, the hands are right inside on the numbers. I mean, that right there is an excellent job of dealing with an outstanding football player. Travis Miner sees that out of the left corner of his eye. He said, Thank you. <laughs> First and goal at the two. Kendra Miner, the setback. There's the fake pitch, and Wanky going for the end zone. Again, to Peter Warwick for the third time today. Young man that they decide to stay in school. If it works for them, I'm all for it. If it doesn't work for them, they got to take care of what they've got to do. But he's back, and he's back with purpose. He's the hardest working kid on the team, and that influences all of the young people. You go home, you call mom, hey, mom. Boy, Peter Warren, he runs these sprints, he lifts weight, he does all this, then you're going to do it too. Yeah. And that's the best thing I think he has been able to lend to this uh, football program. You go into class, you know, just being a model citizen. Well, Mark Rick told us earlier, he says he's the hardest practice player out there. You know, you, when a player who you think is going to go pro early, like Peter Warren probably could have, when he does that, then it makes your coach, put your coach in a tough position telling the receivers who stayed behind as Ertel Jack. Downs the ball in the end zone for a touchback, but this is nothing new for the Seminoles. Look, last week against North Carolina, Travis Miner scores on the first drive. Then they run a fumble in, and then a pass interception by Sean Key for a third score. And Peter Warwick got involved with a long punt return for 75 yards and a touchdown, and they accomplished all of that in seven and a half minutes in the first quarter at Chapel Hill. Took them a little longer here. <laughs> Oh boy. But they've been blessed with some breaks. They've had a good punt return to set up that last drive. Mm -hmm. The second drive was perpetuated by a roughing penalty against Duke on a fourth down punt. First and ten, Duke, their own 20. And here's Bobby Campbell out into the flats, and it is complete to Richmond Flowers. And Flowers has a first down at the 32. That is nice. When you look at Duke on film following this ball game, there's a lot of things so far you can be happy about. You got to get after him quick. A little hesitation. Nice little in and out. Now, now I, like, I like this. See, you get a pivot and you create. See, you showed him, hey, you can get a little yards after the catch. And that's what you've got to do against the Seminoles. You talked about the two people who have got to put numbers on the board here today for Duke. Are and we're Scott. And yeah, but we're Scott. You may see him soon. Top one yet. Here's one thrown in his direction, and it is complete just in time. Doc at the 37 yard line. Duke starting to move the football, and Montgomery with his first pass reception of the day. Heck, if I'd have known I was mic'd inside the huddle, I'd have been talking earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You know, Scotty's a heck of a, a receiver, makes people miss. And this is the thing that they've got to do just keep the drives alive, move the chains, exactly. you know, and keep winky. And that, uh, <laughs> and that other number nine <laughs> on the field. Another phenomenal athlete off the field. Montgomery in motion. And off of B.J. Hill, his first carry of the day. And uh, he doesn't get much there. Stopped up on the interior of the Florida State defensive Jackson. line. Let's go to the sidelines of Mike Hogwood. State Florida State has been running a lot of players in and out. Last week against North Carolina. All of the people that usually suit up at a home game. That's scary. This is more of it. <laughs> Third down and eight. Duke down 21 nothing out of the shotgun. No. Campbell, big rush on. Oh, he didn't see it. Oh boy. Earl Jack almost intercepted, I think, by Gibson. Allen was the one who was in there early. Brian Allen with heavy pressure. Now I, I will bet you a double cheeseburger. That Carl Franks went over this. Let's pick up, guys. This will happen. Who's the hot receiver? Earl Jack has his back to the quarterback. I mean, I, I know these guys went over it. I know Ben Bennett and these guys went over this, and that they don't get credit for it because the kids don't react under pressure properly. Ryan Morton the kick, and Peter Warwick is back. Warwick comes up to get the short kick. Got a chance and to go. And, uh, to the right now, looking 
for the field of flutter receivers at that side and it looks like it's going to be ruled complete to Stringer in Duke territory at the 37. There might be some consultation on that play but that's where they're going to mark it. Ronnie Hamilton made sure it stayed down. What a play by Chris Wanky. Big fella show us some mobility. I want you to watch this guy there. Carlos Thomas watch what happens with this guy. Here's Whitaker personal protector doing his job gets a cut down block. Then you're going to see right there. That's the double block by Thomas. So Thomas gets to start makes a play. Winky squares his shoulders makes a throw. Watch the catch. Now they're talking things over. Kind of clips. <laughs> they, they, and, and, and I think the crew realizes that Stringer they might have been a little assistance. They're gonna Green stuff. Might hear from Jim Knight on this one. Flag is thrown. Illegal touching by the offense. The receiver stepped out of bounds voluntarily, then was the first to touch a pass. The penalty is also down at the previous spot. Second down. Wow. I tell you what, and of course, that caused by, you know, and he's one of the best. Yes, indeed. Four wideouts now for Florida State. They're facing second down and ten. And now Florida State wants timeout. Peter Warwick makes the call. Best record in college football. Second down. Ten to go. Florida State after the timeout. Travis Miner's alone setback. Coles and Warwick to the top. Dugan's admitted to the bottom. Three man rush for Duke. Winky over the middle, complete the minor. So it was none of the. They had a full wide receiver package in the back. Same formation this time. And Warwick out of the quarterback spot. And Warwick is driven back. Oh my. Peter Warwick carries. And also in on the tackle is going to be. Brian McCormick. Brian McCormick. Makes the stop at the 47 yard line. Gain He's four. everywhere. In the air, free ball. Can anybody get it? It might have fallen to the ground, but there's a flag down on the play. Great pressure by Stallmeyer on Wenke. Kendrell Knight comes up with a football, but let's see what the flag is all about. Another illegal touching again. All right, we check it out again. There's Winky tries to square the shoulders up. This time, Woodard gets beat. Stallmeyer eats him up, and Lee see the top off. See, that's what the Blue Devils need a lot more of. And of course, Chris coordinated McAndrews both stressed to us that too many penalties for some. They wanted to really play. Uh, you know, it, it looking for the perfect plays like everybody is, but they wanted to really cut those down. All right, Winky, the quarterback, he's got Jeff Cheney in the backfield with him for the first time today. 34 front by Dukes. He's got a chance to keep him in front of him. And the pass is incomplete, but there's a flag down on the play. The pass was intended for Talman Gardner, a redshirt freshman from New Orleans, but Lamar Grant, who's been all over the field today, is about to get picked for his second penalty. They can't buy a break. And they play well. You got a three man rush. They give you a little flood, two receiver side. Nice little slant and ball's got to be on the way. At that point, it's like both guys going for the ball. They've been consistent. You know, it's almost like hoops. How you call it? Calling it tight now. Yep. With that, but they've been consistent. Wanky, a quarterback again. Holmes got into the neutral zone, but he got back. A lot of times you slip on that logo. <laughs> That's why they put it there. Here's Cheney. Jeff Cheney. No huddle, same receiver group again. And the fake draw. Now it is a draw to Cheney again. Yep. Chaney again. Yeah. Chaney again. Give you a chance in the run game and the passing game. Second group of four receivers hanging in there. Cheney is in the backfield. Blinky with the throw, and it is incomplete and overthrown. It, uh, for financial consideration, it was sold to the Seminoles and actually to the city of Jacksonville as part of their River Raid weekend. Second down and ten for the Seminoles. As we wind down the first quarter. This will be the last play of the quarter. Cheney once again. And Cheney straight ahead, thrown back. Jeff to the Cheney. 
historic show. In fact, he's accounted for all three touchdowns in the first quarter. The first one, a two-yarder. Then the second one, a 39-yard pass and run by Peter Warwick with a great block from Lavernius Cole to set him free, making it 14-0. And then the last, another two-yarder outside the grasp of Lamar Grant. Peter Warwick with three scores, and that's where we stand through one here at Jacksonville. Steve Martin, Doc Walker, Mike Hogwood here at Altel Stadium in Jacksonville, supposedly a neutral site. <laughs> Carl Frank says, I don't mind playing this here this year, but we won't do this again, I don't think. <laughs> Well, Duke has Virginia next week. Third down coming up now for Florida State and about seven. Chris Wayne and his first group of receivers in there. The pass for Laverne is cold. Seven yard attempt for Janikowski. He's nine for 12 this season. His longest this year, 47. And he kicks it long enough and straight through. Of a punt. Yeah, they forced him to kick a field goal. Mm -hmm. You know, there have been some positive things for Bob Trott's group on defense, but Duke has been very, very aggressive getting people to the ball. Your source for sports on the internet, jpsports.com, is now online. Each week, we bring you previews of our upcoming telecast and in depth coverage of the ACC. So, you want the inside scoop? The place to log on to is jpsports.com. Wait a minute. Where's Steve Martin? Oh, you'll come up later on. They're saving that promo. Okay. When you're done reading Scott Snyder's preview of the next week's game, then if you haven't had enough. Scott Snyder or Lance Stewart? He has a ghost right? Oh, yeah. That's the problem. It's the one to say. <laughs> Seven plays, 36 yards, 217 to execute the field goal, and this one is out of bounds. Janikowski's second of the day. A lot of extra hitting upfield, but this one will set Duke up again at the 35 yard line. First time this happened. First time this happened. Uh, yeah, Bobby gave away. on the third play. Yeah, so let's see if you take advantage of these opportunities here. It sounds strange, but you have to blank this out of your mind as an offensive player that the score is 20, you're down by 24. You just try to short memory, start it over again, think 0 0, and Get some points on the board. Bobby Campbell still under center. Scotty Montgomery and Richmond Flowers are split to the top and Ertel Jack to the bottom. Tavius Wilkes is in the backfield and he gets his first carry this season. He's been battling injuries. He gets up to the 40 yard line. It's a five yard gain for the Duke Blue Devils. And our thoughts go out to David Barringer and in particular his wife Sherry who is ill lately and uh, David is a producer of ACC basketball and uh, part of the Jefferson Pilot Sports family. And David and Sherry were thinking of. Yes, indeed. Good people. Second down and five for Duke at their own 40 yard line. Octavius Wilkes and Devin Pierce are the split backs for Bobby Campbell. Big rush is on. Campbell releases. Wilkes can hang on. He had no time to get rid of that one. Great yeah. pressure by Jamal Reynolds. <laughs> To rescue that play. Well, it's just like the tip pass on you know, defense where Grant had a chance at it. You have to convert those. Ertel Jack wide to the right, to the left for Flowers and Montgomery. The lone setback is Wilkes on third down and five. Down 24 nothing. Over the middle, Wilkes gets another chance and converts. First down, and for the first time today, Duke is in Florida State territory at the 45. Reggie Durden on the tackle. Hello. It's his first pass reception of the year. See, there's a the pressure, a little double team there on Simon. So that works. You know, just throw, throw and catch. It didn't hurt that uh, had a little slip there. Brian Allen slipped. But they're, they're mortal. Those guys slip too. You know, <laughs> no. Occasionally. <laughs> I don't believe that. But when they slip, you better take advantage of it. <laughs> you better be ready. 14 yard reception that time. Wilkes again gets the carry. This is the Latavius Wilkes drive. Down to the 43 or 44 yard line. To the sidelines we go with Mike Hogwood. To add to what Doc said a moment ago, Carl Franks has been telling his team, sure the score is 24 nothing, but that doesn't mean they're going to the air attack. As you see, they're still trying to establish a running game and the short passing game. The name for Duke is touchdowns. They haven't scored a lot this season. That's what they want to do here. Just try to get the score and get six points. Only two, in fact, Mike Hogwood. Second down and long eight. Out of the shotgun. Big rush is on. Florida State blitzes two, and they've got Montgomery with dirt and coverage. 
and he's brought down at the 18-yard line. Reggie Durden on the tackle. They present opportunities because they will get in man, they believe in their corners, and they ought to. Let's watch this. Ah, oh, oh, I like that. Oh, little pick action. Good throw and catch. 27 yards downfield to Scotty Montgomery. His second reception of the day, and it sets up Duke first and 10 in the red zone of the 18. That's just by Richmond Flock. Yes, he did. And a nice little pick there. Or did we say that? No, you said pick. Okay. That's an assist. Okay. <laughs> Latavius Wilkes. <laughs> Minor things on there. Down to the 16. It's a gain of two. Derek Gibson, the junior from Miami, in on the tackle for Florida State. But this is a nice looking dude drop. Yeah, now look at the offensive line. Andrews, Lynch, Smith, Wick, Fleming, White. These guys now can start to get a second breath because you start to sense you're getting close to the red area and you can put points on the board. Yeah, I know, I know. And these guys have been wailing at it. I mean, they, they haven't been able to substitute people. Flowers to the left with Kyle Moore in the slot. And Riddle Jack to the right. Campbell to throw, looking for his tight end, and he hits him. And, oh, that's, no, that's Kyle Moore. Yeah, Moore, yeah. It's Kyle Moore. And Moore complete. Good for about eight yards down to the 11-yard line. You know what I like now for Duke? Rhythm. That's They're right. into a rhythm. Yep. And that's the one thing that Mickey Andrews group. They don't allow you to get into rhythm because they they dictate defensively by putting so much pressure on you. Third down and two. Down 24 nothing, but threatening for the first time today. You mentioned tight end. Dupree wouldn't be a bad call now. No, it would. He's lined up over there on the right. Artophilus and Montgomery and Erdl Jack the wide outs. This is Wilkes, and he is tripped up at the four-yard line. By Sean Key, got a shoulder on him. Otherwise, Wilkes was in the end zone. Yeah, and old Fleming is mad too because he he can sense it. You know, we can say this over and over, man. Against this group, you can't slip. You got to keep your feet going. I mean, you know, you look at the block by number 71 on that Troy Andrews got him going, and Duke is knocking on the door. This is the ninth play coming up of a drive that started at the Duke 35. First and goal at the three. Campbell with Hartopolis, Montgomery, and Ertel Jack the wide outs. He falls as he hands off to Latavius Wilkes, and Wilkes gets Got it down. Back. Yeah, he almost lost the ball there once. <laughs> I almost had a trip at the you, you have to settle yourself down. You get so excited, you're just not accustomed to knocking on the door against this defense, and you just have to retain your composure. <laughs> See, that was good right there. Could have been disastrous. Yes, it could have been. Yeah. And look at that. Ooh, Wilkes yep. put it on the ground there for a second. Boy, that Corey Simon. The maniac. Courageous player. Yeah, played to a lot of hurts and won the Brian Piccolo Award last year. Deserving. So just a great cuss hustle guy, great character guy. Timeout on the field called by Florida State to talk things over on second and goal. And we'll take the timeout as well. Florida State is up 24 to nothing, but they're trying to knock it on the door. They're second and goal from the three yard line. Scotty Montgomery getting the ball, moving the change. Duke is doing that on this drive, and they'd like to move the scoreboard a little bit. Latavius Wilkes, the lone setback for Bobby Campbell. Campbell. Good gotta ball to the right. Yeah, got to get gotta rid of it into the end zone. Ertel Jack, but he caught it out of bounds. Forced out of bounds by Reggie Durden. Bobby Rhodes had heavy pressure on Bobby Campbell. That's a good catch, actually. By Herman yeah, Jack. it was, but you got to speed that operation up a bit. Here they come. Look at the surge on that defensive line. Boy, they capture and probably could have had a sack on that play. Carl Franks doesn't want to take three here. They want six. Latavius Wilkes again. This is third and goal. Three wide receivers to the right side. The pitch to the left. Latavius Wilkes, nothing there. Coming up to force the play was Bobby Rhodes. Boy, that was vicious. Junior from Eustis, Florida. Former walk on. And when you talk about pursuit, and this is about angles. There you see 49 peeking through, almost grabbed on it right there. You see him right there? He stays square. Boy, that's very well done. And Duke is called a timeout. And there's Rhodes headed to the sideline.
conference play this week. Maryland 0-1, but their overall 3-1 record's got a lot of people around the Washington, D.C. area happy. NC State, two conference losses, and same with North Carolina. So, very important game for the Tar Heels today at Clemson later this afternoon. Big contest. What up, Lamont Jordan for Maryland? He's a man. Calvin McCall, oh, yeah. good job at quarterback. Oh, there's, there's Carl Franks. He's pretty happy with what Bobby Campbell's done on this drive. It's in its 10th play. They're trying to decide whether on fourth and goal from the three. Do they want to kick a field goal? I think they don't want to right here. I think they want to go for six. They feel I, their defense is playing well enough. I tell you, a group is even happier than Carl Franks. It's the defense for Duke. Those guys are going to actually sit on the sidelines a bit and, and get off that field. Let's go to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Well, Carl Franks upset at Latavius Wilkes. He'd had a great series till that last play. He didn't turn it up north and south. They thought that that uh, read option play would work. I wouldn't be surprised to see him run it again. Latavius Wilkes is at tailback. I'd move that pocket. Whatever I did, I'd move it. Out of the eye formation, fourth and goal. Big rushes on from Rhodes. Campbell throws into the end zone. It is incomplete. Richmond Flowers had the best shot at it for Duke. But it was Mario Edwards who made the deflection as Campbell threw under pressure yet again. And Duke gives up on downs at the three-yard line. I like the call. Go for it. I mean, go down, fight, but you have to have a chance to set up. Never gets a chance to set the feet. There's our guy again, Rhodes, the nemesis. Bobby's on the pressure, and at this point, it's a three-on-one jump ball. But who do you see? Mario Edwards. Edwards almost picked that off. Sure great, did. Great series. Three. The handoff goes to Travis Miner, and he gets a big hole. Turns upfield, squares the shoulders, and Josh Kreider will knock him out of bounds. 27 years old, spent seven years in minor league baseball before returning to Florida State to play football. Second down and ten. Hand off to Miner. Miner breaks a tackle and is on his way. Kreider in pursuit. Clark will finally knock him down. And now, well, oh yeah. First and ten. Play action for Wenke. Throws under pressure and the pass complete to Dugans. Got to get him down. And Grant finally. This is 11th completion today. He's got three on the docket this afternoon. First and ten. Ball at the Duke 23. There's Cheney. You, you know, you can do the same. You can be just as effective right in the guy's belt ball. That's right. Just as effective. Not down where. Yeah, that's down to the ankle. That gets where it gets kind of cheesy. From behind. You know, when fellas see that on film, you know, that just that doesn't go over well. Second down and 26 now. Florida State backed up to their the Duke 39 pass is deflected and I think that was Kevin Lewis mm -hmm. coming up here for Florida State 26 they lead it however 24 nothing Wanky has Coles and Warwick to the top side Dugans to the bottom and now whistles out here in the second quarter they're up 24 nothing 849 left to go until halftime it's third down and 26 the ball is on the Duke 39 yard line. Florida State in this position because of a 15 yard personal foul penalty. Peter Warwick wide to the top side. Dugans to the bottom side. There's two wide receivers in the split backfield for Wink. Holmes with pressure. The pass is complete to Dugans at the. On to kick the field goal from 38 yards out. And the kick is good. It's second of the afternoon. But they're going to have to take more chances. Cross Street scoreboard shows East Carolina with a heavier margin here on Army at Mikey Stadium and a surprise Michigan having their way with Purdue today. Michigan solid, but Spartans. Whoa. 5 0 over Iowa. And of course, Nebraska over Oklahoma State today. 21 0 here in the second quarter here. Our score 27 0 Florida State. Top ranked in the country, and uh, they've shown us a lot of reasons why. Janikowski on for the kickoff. Janikowski's either been out of bounds or out of the end zone. This is the latter. If we return, Duke will pick it up at the. Is our halftime host. As you look into the offensive huddle here, Bobby Campbell talking things over with Carl Franks, and I know it's tough for Carl to come here and because he came here so many years with Florida. Fun and gun, baby. Oh, yeah. 
you know there still is a holdover on the Duke staff from the Steve Spurrier era at Duke. And that's Fred Chapman. He's been at Duke 14 years. First and ten, Duke from their own 20 yard line. Campbell back with a seven step drop. And the pass is incomplete. Drop. Second down. And ten. Now you dictated the pass. Four man rush for Florida State. Pass is deflected and now intercepted. It's picked off by Chris Hope. The sophomore from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Just second interception yeah. of the season. In Duke territory at the 35. You never seem to get tip balls when they tip them. If you're, they're on offense, the ball ends up on the ground. You tip one, it goes in the air. When they're on defense, they come down with it. This is the third drive of the afternoon that started uh, Duke's side of the football field for Florida State. Here is Warwick, and he's back to pass. His second pass of the season complete for a touchdown to Lavernius Coles. Peter Warwick, his first touchdown pass ever to Lavernius Coles. Touchdown passes, and he's just thrown his first touchdown pass of the season and of his career. 35 yard hook up to Lavernius Coles, 34 to nothing. Florida State, they take advantage of the interception by Chris Hope, and Peter Warwick says, I'll do the rest, and he did. Sebastian Janikowski is on the kick. This will be his seventh kickoff of the day. Two of them have been out of bounds, and the rest have been out of the end zone. Myrtle Jack is back. He said just once I'd like to bring one out. It won't be this time. It'll be first and ten out of the 20-yard line. And some little extra activities going on on the field, and to chronicle those and other things, here's Mike Hogwood. Well, some ACC news of the week. I think it's really safe to say that Georgia Tech quarterback Joe Hamilton and Peter Warwick, who's having an amazing game here today, are the leading candidates now for the Heisman Trophy. Also in our news, we have one ACC game already complete, played on Thursday night. Georgia Tech beat Maryland, but I think it's safe to say that Maryland and Wake Forest, the two surprises here early in this ACC season, we've got that game next week. High noon from Grove Stadium in Winston-Salem. Yes, we do. We're looking forward to that one. Hope you'll join us. Dog fight. It yeah, will be a good be dog fight. Two great running backs, Lamont Jordan and Morgan Kane. Duke first and ten at their own 20. Hand off goes to B.J. Hill. Flag is thrown in to boot. And leading the charge is going to be Octavius Jackson. Not a lot of room on that play. Let's see what the call is. Guys in the striped shirts have been pretty busy this afternoon. It's a hole. All right, now these two guys look like they want to go in and deal with that torture. You think so? I don't. <laughs> I think this is one of those weeks you can say, you know what, I think I'll be ready next week, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be ready next week. You know, Bobby hasn't done that bad a job. No, he hasn't. He hasn't. <laughs> he, hasn't. he hasn't done a big. And I, and I tell you what, though. Um, if you're a player, you do want to play against them. You always want to play against the best. Well, you know, Duke came down to Tallahassee last year. And they thought they'd had their best team that they, they could put against the Seminoles in a long time. And they were up, in fact, early on. 7-3 wound up losing and to the tune of 62-10 uh, to 10 or something like that. And everybody came down with a stomach virus during the game. That's right. First and 20 from the 10 after the hole. Quick swing pass is over the head of Richmond Flowers. Got to give your receiver a chance. Yeah. You know, the play is set up. Florida State makes a living with that play. That, that's a ball that really needs to be right on the numbers so that as the re receiver makes the catch, he can run. And that's a that's a timing play too. You saw how Maryland ran that Thursday night yep. against Georgia Tech. Very good. At I thought Calvin McCall did an excellent job. Calvin has stepped in, man, and just rolling. Yes, he has. Richmond Flowers is split wide out to the right side. Ben Hurdle Jack to the left. Scotty Montgomery's in the slot to the right on second down and 20. Here's Campbell. Campbell looking in the direction of Montgomery is complete and driven out of bounds there by Mario Edwards at the 18 yard line. And it's going to be a gain on the play of eight. I want you to watch Bobby Campbell this time. We've seen him going backwards. Now watch the footwork. Sets up, plants, throws. You know, if he can do that, he can give you those results. You can move the chains that way, but mm -hmm. you got to stay out of those 
second and long. Right now they're third and 13, down 34 nothing. Backed up to their own 17 yard line. Out of the shotgun, and it's an open backfield. Five wide receivers. Now Montgomery acts like a tight end and steps in next to the left tackle. And we've got a flag down, and it's a delay of game. Shock the uh, game clock has run out. Run the play or something to that effect. Out of the mouth of Carl yeah. Frank. And Scotty saying, hey, coach, uh, I saw Octavius Jackson, the 255 pound freshman, <laughs> with a ear hole shot on my buddy Bobby. So I tried to save him. All right, five wide outs again. Campbell back to throw, rushes on, passes behind Scotty Montgomery. Dirt and covering on the play. Now we showed you before when Bobby got a chance to set up and plant and throw. Well, that last play was just the opposite of that. He had no time to do it. And I know this is a bit of a stretch, but you know, when you, when you watch Carl Franks here, he's a part of that fun and gun with Spurrier, and they've tried to set some components up here. Boy, it takes a lot more work on the game. It takes, you know, a couple more recruiting classes. Yes, it does. Morton, two yards deep in his end zone, and Reggie Durden is back to catch it. Durden falls for it in the 50. Steps ahead to the 45 of Duke and is brought down there. And the tackle is made by Dan Umbo. Umbo has made a couple of special teams tackles today for the Duke Blue Fred Harris, 16, did a real fine job as a release man of pressing to the ball. 39 yard punt by Brian Morton. Durden's six yard return brings it back to the 45 yard line of Duke. When you play Florida State and you're a release man on punt coverage, you might as well be a running back or a receiver. Your role is that prominent. Yes, it is. Because you have got to stop. You, you, you got to get down there. And because it's either Warwick who can return it for a score or Durden did a great job on the 37 yard return early on. And this is Travis Minor. A flag goes into the fray there at the 35 yard line. Penalty flag. Gardner was out trying to help. Stallmeyer in on the tackle. That um, that bounce. That was a Warwick Dunn bounce. Yes, you know? it was. You know we've spent a lot of time, and everybody spends a lot of yeah. time talking about Peter Warwick. But you, give, you 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 forget about Travis Miner. Holding, holding by the offense, by the ten yards from the spot of the oh, foul. Talon Gardner, good call. Good yep. call. Anytime the hands are outside the numbers then you are subject for that call. As an offensive guy, you want to keep it in the framework. It's an imaginary square right across the line of the numbers under the, under the armpits. So it's first down and nine. It's marked off on the spot of the penalty. It's actually ahead of the Chiefs. Ball backed up to the Duke 44 yard line. Florida State up 34 nothing. Winky. Going drop. Yeah, yep. going for it. Going for it all here over the middle and uh, it's for flag. Stringer. A flag is in on the play. Jermaine Stringer was the intended receiver. Lamar Grant in the area, along with Darius Clark. Grant knocked the ball down, but let's see if the call is against him. Now he's going for the trifecta. And it's against Duke. We'll see it again. And all fairness to any defensive back, if you got that kind of time, let's watch it. See, I thought everything was right until the offhand. You can't see the hand. See, look on the outside here. Let's watch this. Let's see if he grabs him right on the inside. You can't see it, but he can. Yep. See, he got a pretty good view of it. He can look right in there and see that. And he did. Got that backhand that you yeah. couldn't see. Couldn't see it, but you, you have to, the good ones tug a little bit. He didn't need to tug. All he had to do was go for the ball. But that call has been consistent. Yes, all it oh, no, the, the, group, the group has been consistent. They have. First and ten. At the 29. Play fake, end around. This is Gardner. Gardner turns the corner. Uh -oh. Gardner has a first down, maybe more. Brought down by Eric Jones and Lamar Grant inside the Duke 10 yard line down to the eight. Tallman Gardner, his first run of the year. Exciting redshirt freshman from New Orleans. To the watch Ryan Sprague. I'm going to see a tight end get a good block on this. This is Florida State. This is Bobby Bodden and 
Mark Rick at their absolute best because now they've got you. They keep you off balance and you put those outstanding athletes in open space and they make people miss. Jermaine Stringer threw a guy's ball. Oh, yeah. First and goal from the eighth. Wanky throws. It's a dart to Kendra. Touchdown. Dan Kendra. A favorite in Tallahassee and playing well here in Jacksonville. That's his second pass reception for a touchdown this season. The former quarterback converted to a fullback has made it successfully. This is a good story. Because you like a kid who works hard, is able to overcome adversity, great concentration on the football. You know he's familiar with the end zone. And there he gives you. <laughs> Janikowski out of the hold of Marcus Otzen, and the point after is good, making it 41 to nothing. There's Dan Kendra. He was injured in preseason prior to last year. He was supposed to be the quarterback of this team. That opened the door for Chris Wenke. And when Kendra came back fully recovered from the knee injury, they decided to move him over to fullback. Mark Rick says it takes about five games for a guy to adapt. Guess what? This is game number five. Yeah, and he's there. Yeah, he has. It's amazing how they have it now. Oh, Bobby with a low five. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know he's having fun with it. Yes, he is. He still has a lot of fun at this game. He's still. And, and, and who couldn't have fun with the unit he's got out there? I mean, he has got, he feels his deepest team with the exception of a quarterback. Doesn't yeah. feel he's that deep at quarterback yet as far as experience is concerned. But everybody else. Well, lots of we know has some time and they, this Jared Jones, the young man, they feel has a lot of potential. You may see him yes, later indeed. on this afternoon. But this Dan Kendra, I mean, if you've ever been hurt as an athlete and you feel a bit, a bit ostracized from the team as a, well, just, Magnified as a quarterback, a guy who's a team leader, and now you're gone. And plus the added bonus of a guy who knows every blocking assignment, oh, yeah. knows where everybody's supposed to be. And that's the thing that Mark Rick talks about is that what he gives you is that he has a great understanding and has a better grasp, a quicker grasp of the things that he has to do in terms of picking up blitzes and stuff like that. Strong as odds. Yep. Janikowski to kick it off again. Look at how that just picks up air, and this will be returned. Richmond Flowers. Flowers heads to the outside and is brought down at the 15 yard line. Now let's go to the sidelines. Mike Hogwood with a preview of what's coming up at halftime. Well, Steve, coming up at halftime, we're going to talk to both coaches about what they'll do in the second half. It'll be interesting to hear the comments of Florida State coach Bobby Bowden, as well as uh, Carl Flanks. We'll, we'll have our Domino's Play of the Week. And we'll also look back at our ACC Game of the Century, Florida State's National Championship big win over Nebraska. It's all coming up at halftime. Thank you very much, Mike Hogwood. That's Stanford Samuels made the tackle on Richmond Flowers, and that sets Duke up at their own 15-yard line. Bobby Campbell is Devin Pierce, and Dwayne Epperson is backfield. There's three wideouts. This is Epperson. Nice block thrown by a center, Troy Andrew, gets him up to about the 20-yard line, and then it folds down in a hurry. Tackle made by Tommy Polly. He's already had a pass deflection on the afternoon that resulted in an interception by Chris Holt. <laughs> Five fifteen and counting here in the first half. Forty one nothing Florida State Seminoles on Peter Warwick day. It seems three touchdown receptions and he's thrown a touchdown pass. Campbell hands off to Epperson. He's hit from behind but still struggles ahead to the twenty two. Pauly is in there. Bradley Jennings is also on the tackle. Boy, Abdul Howard. Boy, what's impressive. Is that Duke is continuing to play as Mike Hogwood pointed out their game plan now this will pay off today but it'll pay off against Virginia and Georgia Tech and as the schedule progresses because these guys now this is a difficult situation and they are competing yep and they're moving the ball on the ground which is what they need to try to do to better set up what they want to accomplish with their airborne attack it's third down and four Pass to the flats for Montgomery is thrown too tall. Chris Hope is covering on the play. That's the kind of play you have to go after. They're going to give it to you, but you have to win. And sometimes you got to take that outside position and cut it in, cut it in, you know, and just improvise. It's just that way you have somebody's got to make a play. 
Speaking of making a play, Peter Warwick is in punt formation. Brian Morton is there to kick. We'll look at it from behind Morton's back. Reggie Dirt. Uh oh. Coming out. Wow. He got away with it. And he tries to kick it away from Warwick. He'll pick it up on the bounce and he ran out of bounds. So the impetus of the catch takes him out at the 41 yard line. It's a 41 yard kick for Brian Morton. And not much a return for Peter Warwick. 41, first and 10 no, he didn't plan that one. No. Florida State uh, next week settles a little interstate rivalry with Miami. And then they have Wake Forest. And that could be a tough game. And then, of course, the game that everybody's been kind of looking at on October 23rd when Bobby Bowden faces son Tommy Bowden at Death Valley. And Tommy Bowden. Might have a surprise or two for him. That's a Clemson football program that is uh, headed in the right direction. And then Virginia, Maryland, and then the season ended with Florida. First and ten at the 41. Whoa! Uh -oh. A knock him back oh, oh, tackle by Darius Clark on the ball carrier that time. And that is going to be Nick Maddox carrying the football. He's changed his uniform number back to 20. They like Nick. But Lick, Nick doesn't like that one. That no. was licked by Darius. Two freshman out of Kannapolis, North Carolina, and rated as the top running back in the country last year in high school football. The pass to Ron Dugans. Another flag thrown in. Lamar Grant is in the area, and he may be called once again. And Lamar is in great position. And he's going to have to just avoid all contact and go for the ball. That call's been there all day. Let's see it. Yeah, it by the defense. Top of the action. Now, at this point, he's got to see it. He's got to break on the ball. See, he glides in at the ball. See the arm right yep, there? That's yep. what got him. That's what got him. And at this point now, you know, Bob Trot, you got to pull this kid over. He hadn't played a lot for you this year. He's been practicing and talk to him. He's too good an athlete to let this happen repeatedly. 15 more yards on the penalty to the Duke 45. Wenke back to throw steps up fires pass is complete and it's menace Marvin menace down to the 28 yard line it's a completion of about 17 yards LeVar Johnson back up inside linebacker making the tackle boy that's a nice route you talk about stop on a dime menace already has the crowd with a chanting a little bit about it Broke a bone in his foot in preseason. 17 yard reception. Missed the first two games, first three games of the season. Played against NC State. Here's Wenke to throw. It is complete. And this looks like it's Dugan's. And good for a first down. They'll mark him down at the 16 yard line of Duke. On the tackle is going to be Charles Porter. This is what you don't have an answer for. Florida State now can rotate people who are fresh, who are chomping at the bit to play. And to show their skills. And you as a defender, you've been on the, on the field now the whole half. First and 10 at the 15 yard line. Here's Wenke to throw. Wenke to the corner. Dugans caught it out of the end zone. There's a flag on the play. This may be interference against Florida State. There's a second flag going down as he went over the pylon. And that might have been verbal. First down over again. Wanky hands off. This is Davy Ford. So we've seen four running backs for Florida State. And Davy Ford carries it down to the 12 yard line. 27 yard. Out of the hole of Outson on the left hash. And it is good. So Janikowski with a hat trick. We've seen a lot of this in the first half. Florida State 44. Duke nothing. Florida, Florida State, of course, number one in the country. Back to Looking for a second national championship in the 90s. Mike Hogwood will chronicle their most recent national championship at halftime. Little Jack says, what the heck? Down it and we'll go to the 20. Minute 22 left to go. What a weapon Janikowski can be. Well, he negates a weapon. You know, he negates if you have a return guy. And he takes it away for you. Oh, Bobby's getting into that that low five. Yeah. Well, yes, he is. First and ten, Duke from their own twenty. Campbell still under center, and a handoff now goes to B.J. Hill. 
twists, he turns, he does little else. Right down on the play. Second down and ten. Play fake. Campbell over the middle, sells it well, and hits Richmond Flowers. And Flowers is out to the 40-yard line. A gain of 20 on the play. Sean Key picked him up and put him down. Sean Key and Brian Allen make the stop. So nice gain on the play of 20. 34 seconds left to go in the first half. Duke trying to break that goose egg on the scoreboard, take something positive into the locker room. Three wide receivers, but here comes B.J. Hill, and Hill, quick opener off left tackle. Brought down there by Gibson and Rhodes. And also Woods, it's a gain of two. Brings up second down and eight, and looks like Duke is going to call timeout. We're very close to it here. 14 seconds left. They have called a timeout. Stop the clock. And see if Campbell can get them into some sort of field position here. Well, you, you, know, it's, you don't want to give the ball up, but you do want to try to push it downfield. And Florida State's Benford is in the neutral zone, steps across. Let's see if he was drawn. John Miller was the Duke offensive lineman involved. It's going to be offsides against. So March at five yards upfield. Up to the 45, and three seconds left to go, and Campbell can air it out, see if he can find somebody down there. He's got Montgomery, Flowers wide out. They do it out of the shotgun. Dupree is the tight end from the up position. Campbell with time down the middle of the field for Flowers nearly picked off by Gibson. A bang bang play right there by Derek Gibson to end the half and break up the pass intended for Richmond Flowers. The first half goes pretty much as people expected it to. The Peter Warwick show. All game like this where you were overmatched in a lot of areas and then be genera generous and giving the ball up, fumbles and holding, the things finish. of that nature Jermaine that just Trinder. don't help. But I'll say this, the eight effort by Duke has been courageous and defensively, they've earned four stops. Yes, they have. Uh, unfortunately, the only time they forced uh, Florida State to punt, they roughed the kicker, that negated the punt, kept Florida State on the move, and they eventually scored a touchdown. Sims Lenhart on the field for the first time this afternoon with the kickoff to start the second half. Up there is going to be Gardner, and he is hit once and still keeps his feet and driven out of bounds by Josh Kreider at the 25. Huh? First and 10 at the 25 yard line. Marcus Outson is in there at quarterback. Quarterback, final three games of the season for the Seminoles. He carries his, calls his own number and gets it out to the 33 yard line. Four balls for three touchdowns and 49 yards. Not an extraordinary day as far as. His yardage is concerned. The results were tremendous. Altson again. Calls his own number back in the national championship game in the Fiesta. First and ten. He's working out of the shotgun. Maddox back for protection. Pass is incomplete, and it's intended for Anquan Bolden. He's a freshman out of Hokie, Florida. Well, Altson's been in three plays. In three plays, he's been involved in contact. You know, a couple of ones are in. Here's Otson back to throw again. Pressure is on. Steps up nicely and airs it up big time. Looking there for number 13, Marvin Minnis. Flat out. Good protection for Otson and he'll scramble out of the box. Holmes in pursuit and Kevin Lewis will catch him at the fourth. You play, but you still have to think. We want you to think the game. Back to the Blue Devils. Myrtle Jack waiting for Keith Cockrell's punt. Be his first official one of the day. He hunted one in the first half, but it was negated by a roughing penalty. That's a good one. Fair catch called for by Erdeljack at 12. Let's go to the sidelines of Mike Hogwood. Thanks, hey, Steve. Like to invite all our fans to uh, dial into our. Know if they're wise, but there are a lot of words on it. First and ten from the 13-yard line. Thank you, Mike. Bobby Campbell still under center. Epperson and Pierce are his setbacks. There's a little lateral in there to Everson. He lost the football. That kept Simon away from the football. 
Second down and ten. And here's the draw to Epperson. And Simon is there again. And he's got. And I bet you Mickey Andrews got in it at halftime and had a few choice words for his defense. Gave up some pretty decent runs. Well, it was a continuation of the haranguing he gave them down there on fourth and three. Fourth and goal, and they, they responded. Yes, yep. So you got a. Austin Smith would look like he was rocking in his stance. And that'll be against Duke if he marched off half the distance. Offensive way of thinking in his quarterbacks, and that's where the key is. It's not so much throwing to specific receivers, it's throwing to specific areas and having receivers catch up to the ball. Yeah, and the, and the premise is to throw. To the single covered side and, and to throw away from trouble. Right. Little jack in motion. There's the little flare and it's deflected. Deflected in there, and I think it was Jamal Reynolds. Oh, he's Reverse still again. going. This is unbelievable. Look at this. Finally, Duke gets a break and they corral him at both ends of his body. Amen. And also Akil Ross finally make the tackle. And the crowd cheers. They love it. <laughs> they thought that was wonderful. But it was a big break for Duke, and they got the job done. These guys have tough played a quarter on one play. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Uh, this isn't fair. Now he's not on offense, so you know he's fresh. Comes up, makes you miss. Not nothing there. Boop, boop. Not nothing there. <laughs> That were four changes of direction. Like he's got slick them all over his body. Well, he got some negative yardage that time. All right, let's take a break right here with Florida State part this afternoon. And we have a new quarterback for Florida State up 44-0. Jared Jones is in the game, and his first official duty is to hand off to Davey Ford. He gets up to the 49-yard line. Charles Porter is in on the tackle. Let's give you the book on. Jared Jones. He's from Walla Walla, Washington, same high school as Drew Brudso. He's a true freshman, or played as a true freshman. He's a sophomore, 6'5, 235. Every quarterback, 6'5 or better, yeah. Florida State. They rave over the potential of this young man. Well, Mark Rick says Bobby Bowden says he's got all the pitches. In other words, mm -hmm. everything in his repertoire is. Is very, Jared very Jones good. Came off to number 22, Davey Davey Ford, Ford getting the ball up over the 50 yard line, brought down at the 48, at the 48 line. by uh, Charles Porter. Porter. Bobby Bowden looks on. Headsets are Third on time. Chris Winkie's head there a minute ago. As you look at Jared Jones, third down and about five. Some fresh defensive back. Big pressure on and an incompleted pass Ooh, by yes. Jones, but. Safety blitz that time actually was an outside linebacker yep. pressure Kevin from Lewis. Kevin Lewis. Yep. One of the things we talked about again was Kevin Lewis, the guys on the outside, Kendall Knight. They needed to have a big, big day. Strong rush inside. You know, you, you don't see a lot of that, but that time, Noah Wilson has a great pressure right up the gut. Keith Cottrell is on the punt for the third time today, the second official. Ronnie Hamilton's back in punt formation, standing at the 10. Down by Florida State at the 20 yard line. Huh? Great kick on the play of about 27 yards. Malcolm Tatum downed it. Well, we invite you to try out your source. So get in, pick your topic, and have yourself a time. JPSports.com. Bobby Campbell's still in there. And Duke using Dwayne Epperson up off the left side of the offensive line, and he gets up to the 23 yard line. Stop at the 22 yard line. I'm trying to figure out one thing, Steve, at this point. Correction. What do, what, what can Duke do that they didn't try in the first half, you know, against the first team? Yeah. Of, you know, assailants. Is there anything else that, that, you know, that maybe, I don't think they say held it back, but that would take them downfield a little bit better with the ball? Montgomery's still in there. Get the backup tight end Ben Watson out of the slot position. Third up receiver is Richmond Flowers. Campbell trips from center and goes down. That wasn't playing. No. That wasn't. Own offensive coordinator. He's handling things there. 
Bobby Trot is the defensive coordinator. There's Alonzo Jackson. Steps up on third down. 44 0, Florida State. Campbell, deep drop. Pass clears out to his fullback, Devin Pierce, and Pierce. Don't be shy of the first down, but gets it out to the 28-yard line. The game of about 12 Pierce. yards, and uh, Abdul Howard, actually 10 Abdul yards, Abdul Howard, Howard and uh, Theon Rackham get off the tackle for Florida State. It was a nice play, but yep. you know, you take away the stumble, you're giving away yardage, but it was a nice call. They were able to kind of set up a little diversion on the left side of the field and, and, and get it back open. Get a little bit of uh, punting room for Brian Morton. And Reggie Durden is back in punt formation. He brought one back 37 yards in the first half. Yeah, he's averaging 12 game. Oh, nearly blocked. This is a good one by Morton. Durden is back. Gets by Fred Harris. Flag on the play. And now Fred Harris will get a second shot at him and bring him down at the 39. And the flag is just three yards behind where the final play was made. And it's a nice punt at 39 yards. Not much of a return. Neutral site, supposedly. That's a Duke's home game, but it was dispatched to Florida State in the financial transaction. Marcus Hobson is back in the game, and his oh, pass got is got it. off. Got it. It's uh, Hamilton with the pick. There's the block, and Hamilton is making his way at the 30, up to the 40, and threads the sideline where out finally out took his own guy out. Yeah. Hobson's pass, pass picked off there by Hamilton, and he makes the tackle at the 47 yard line. So, a positive development for the Blue Devils in their first interception of the day. You got to take advantage of it. We've been preaching this, and, and, I, and now it's starting to come to reality. Now, what causes it? Pressure. Get a little bit of pressure. Art trying to throw across his body into double coverage. Just ill advised all the way. When he first got in the game, he started off running. That would have been a good opportunity to tuck and run. First and ten, Duke at their own 47. Here's an effort to the setbacks. The play action. Campbell with time and a receiver. Richmond Flowers. And Flowers is brought down by Sean Key. And it's a nice connection to the 33-yard line of Florida State. It's going to be nearly a 20-yard reception. So Duke coming right back after the pick. And they'd like to get that bubble off the school. Yeah, well, what you want to see is what he just did, the clinch fist. What we don't want to see is we don't want to see Key going out of the game with an injury. No, holding that right elbow. Yeah, no, we don't like that. Chris Hope will take his spot in the defensive secondary. And off now goes to Epperson. So holes That's of opportunity start to open up. Austin Smithwick with a nice block. And Epperson gets up over the 30 to the 28-yard line. That's competing. I mean, if you just look at that play and you don't pay attention to the score, you can't tell. That's great surge up front by Duke. Derek Gibson finally stopped it. Junior from Miami. The Duke Blue Devils. Trying to push their way into the end zone after the interception by Ronnie Hamilton. Well, they could have had points on the board. They opted to go for seven. Yep. No, seven yep. Would have, he would have nailed that. He would have had a field goal. Second down and five. Campbell hands off to Epperson, and he is Ooh. met. I mean met. Oh, boy, Tommy Pauly. <laughs> you know, they keep track of a lot of different. But you keep gnawing. Montgomery is split wide out to the top side. Inside of him is Dupree, the tight end. Flowers split to the right. Play action for Campbell on third down. Over the middle, almost picked off by Derek Gibson. Pass intended there for Richmond Flowers. Pivot Thompson to hold for Sims Lenhart. Will attempt a 46 yard field goal. The 46 yard attempt. The snap is there, the kick is low, but it is through the uprights, and Duke is on the scoreboard. 49 field goals, a new Duke record each time he hits one for Sims Lenhart, the senior from Charleston. We'll be back after this. His longest this season is 49. 44-3. Florida State on the lead, but Duke taking advantage of the turnover. Ronnie Hamilton intercepting Marcus Hodson. And this is Tallman Gardner, one yard deep. And Gardner leads Devin Pierce's tackle, and then Josh Kreider helps bring him down. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, Nick Maddox. Another 
quarterbacks are tall, but their running backs uh -oh. are small. Ball up left on the ground. Jared Jones didn't get it from center. And you know, this is not like guys who have played at all. Yeah. You, know, you expect more. With the exception of quarterback, yeah. everybody saw some action in the first half. There's Troy Austin. Picked up the fumble. So 441 left to go in the third quarter. Duke's got the football again, and Kevin Thompson now is going to be under center. New quarterback for the Duke Blue Devils. Thompson is a senior from Thomasville, Georgia. Three career touchdown passes to his credit, looking for his first this year. Dwayne Epperson wrestled down by Theon Rack, senior out of Tallahassee. Gain of about three on the play. It's amazing as opposed to the Northwestern game for Duke, they've had some success on first down. And they really have. That's true. You know, and, and that's the thing that you always want. Give your offense a chance. Bobby Campbell has uh, performed pretty well today. Against some big, big obstacles. Now Kevin Thompson gets a work. Scotty Montgomery is split wide to the right. Flowers to the left. The pitch to Epperson. Epperson is met in the backfield. Jamal Red three in terms of tackles yes. on this team, and that's how you'd like it. Yes, you do. You get those guys up there. Just until 21 tackles for a defensive tackle in the fourth game of the season. It's bad. Thompson with play action. Sets up, fires. It is incomplete. Intended for Flower. Score on Purdue. And here comes Sims Lenhart. A 47 yard field goal now on fourth down. Here comes the kick. It is up. And it is good. Cool. He is perfect on He's the just season. My goodness. It doesn't get up as high as Janikowski's, no. but the result is the same, and he's yet to miss this year. And he's Duke's leading scorer. And he's hit his ninth field goal of the season. A 47 yarder and the 17th from 45 or better for Sims Lenhardt, who is battling Sebastian Janikowski kick for kick this afternoon and battling him for that uh, Lou Groza award. So Florida State now finds itself looking for its first score of the second half after putting 44 points on the board in the first 30 minutes of play. And outs it. Up there at quarterback last time around. He threw an interception. Here's the pitch to Mattis. Steps inside, runs into looks like Steinbaugh. And also Kevin Lewis, Porter, and Chris Combs, Nate Krill also in there. Carolina decided to go to Florida State. Play action for Marcus Otson and the pass to Bell. Battling for a job there at the backup quarterback spot. Out of the shotgun, it's a jailbreak blitz, and Maddox is brought down behind. Get it done this half, and Keith Cockrell is on the punt. That's a detail that I think they can overlook slightly. Yeah. If you're on Duke's side. 38 points for the friend. There's the kick. Cockrell, it's a good one. Hurdle Jack oh, gets by one. There's a flag on the play. And Hurdle Jack doesn't return it far. 48 yard return. kick by Keith Cockrell. May his space have been invaded? Maybe. That seems to be the indication. That was gutsy. Got to give that guy two yards. It certainly didn't look like he had it. Let's see what the call is going to be. Take Ronald like Donald have five. Let's see. That's the call. Now we take a look at it. We talk about that imaginary zone. You'd like to have it about right there. Let's see if it happens. Yep. Yep. It's a good call. And so Duke has the football. A little bit better field position now at their 36 yard line. Kyle Moore is split out to the left. Watson inside him. Thompson back to throw. 
Fires a pass incomplete intended for Devin Pierce, who was covered pretty well by Tommy Paul. <laughs> I think Tommy had that one figured out. Yeah. <laughs> and if you do, you, know, you can look over there and say, hey, wait a minute. I thought they were going to rotate some people. <laughs> Haven't we had enough of Polly right now at 53, Simon? <laughs> Where are the twos? He <laughs> told us, hey, you promised us. <laughs> These other guys. <laughs> <laughs> They're nowhere to be seen. <laughs> oh, man. Is Jamal Reynolds is still out there. Yeah. <laughs> Petitioning <laughs> Mr. Swafford next week. <laughs> oh, man. Thompson puts it up. Trouble. He's looking for more, and it's intercepted. It's picked off by Tay Cody. Cody, a junior from Blakely, Georgia, like it with everything. Darius Clark, who picked off two against Vanderbilt last week, gets another one here today. Well, here Jones comes in and does exactly what his counterpart did. John Thompson, he telegraphs the throw. Looks to where he wants to go. Great break and jump on it by Clark. The hammer man comes up big now in a couple last week. That's right. He's got six for his career and three on the season. And Duke's got the football again this time in an ideal scoring position in the red zone at the 15 yard line of Florida State 44 6 approaching the final minute here in the third quarter. Now let's see if they try to run the ball a little bit more on this one. Got Kennedy in at fullback. And Latavius Wilkes is back there. Three wide outs now for Kevin Thompson. Who's Gotta get in. Rid of it. Yep. They'll tuck it under and run. Sees the first down. Touchdown Duke. The Blue Devils score Kevin Thompson from 15 yards out after the interception by Darius Clark. He saw all kinds of daylight over there on the left sideline, took it in. And Duke's got six more on the board. Oh, Jamal Reynolds has made, made a living all afternoon flying upfield. Top of your screen, and you, you can look at it. Wes White's in a battle. That time he won it. Sims Lenhart is on to kick the point after. He's hit 47 straight. It is up and it is good. Back to receive. And that's why, as, a, as if you're a player, the only way you know you're out of the game for sure is if you're in street clothes. <laughs> to me, if you have that helmet on, you need to be prepared to go in at any time. Well, Peter Warwick is ready to go in. He won't be on this kick return team. Lavernius Coles and Jermaine Stringer will handle these duties. Coles, mind you, has one career kickoff return for a touchdown. And only the second since Bobby Bowden has been at Florida State. This one's going to be a low line driver. And Stringer will deal with this somehow. real interesting. Oh and Duke will get back. Fred Harris slows him down, and they'll get him down at the one yard line. Now, if I'm Duke, I'm pleased to see the number ones back in. You talked about pride. Well, now you get a chance to go out and prove it. You know, they're putting the twos in against your ones. Now you bring the ones back in. Now you want to see if you can snuff them. It's a on back. On back, guys. Bring the ones back in, and they are. Ah, we got it going. Again. Chris Winky is back on the field. Dugans and Warwick <laughs> are the wide receiver. <laughs> this is trash talking time That's now. That's right. Warwick is, I don't know if he's talking to Lamar Grant or what. Here comes Winky. And the one and a half. He'll hand off. That looks like game four. Nope, Travis Miner. Yard line. Mike Steinbaum has played some good football this afternoon. Senior middle guard out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, you know, Bob Trott's group right now can grow up big time. You talk about, uh, you know, defining moments in your team and your the history and the season. Buddy, they get a three and point on this one. And that's, you know, it's just an excitement. And your offense is going to get a good chance to get some good field people. Second down and eight. Wank pass complete to Dugan. But a quick tackle there by Ronnie Hamilton at the eight yard line. And that's a completion of about four. It'll be shy of the first down. It's a tick down time here in the third quarter. It comes to an end, and it's been all Duke in the third as they've converted some touchdown or some interceptions into touchdowns and field goals. And they've got ourselves a ball game here coming into the fourth. 44 13. Scored Florida State 13 to nothing in that third, and we are 44-13 in favor of the Seminoles. It's still a pretty big margin for Florida State, but Bobby Bowden is in 
is uh, in ill favor right now. He is unhappy with his second unit. He's got his first unit back in there, looking at a third and two from his own eight yard line. Chris Wanky, big blitz is on by Lewis. The pass complete, and it's going to be good for the first down at the 25 yard line to Peter Ward. Good tackle made on the play, Darius Clark. What we've already noticed is just a bit more. They've, they've, they've closed the cushion. I mean, now it's a catch and a hit. Before it was a catch, a turn, and a tackle. Yeah. First and ten. Steve Martin, Doc Walker, Mike Hogwood here in Jacksonville. Sunny October afternoon. Jefferson Pilots sports went to ACC football. Wenke on first and ten. Flair pass to Dugans. He pushes aside Jones and is on his way. Hamilton may be able to catch him. Stringer throws a block. He's going all the way. Touchdown. On the fifth touchdown pass of the day for Chris Wenke. Great block by Jermaine Stringer. Helped keep Ronnie Hamilton off the scene and put Bobby Bowden in a better frame of mind here as the Seminoles lead 51 13. Janet Kaskin's kick will be returned by Ertel Jack. And Ertel Jack behind the block of Richmond Flowers. And he's collected there at the 15 yard line. Let's look at our John Hancock stats through three quarters of play. Still heavily in favor of Florida State, but Duke picked up the pace as far as their passing off. Yeah, no, they did. And uh, now we're going to find out what happens after they take a blow. You give up a few more points. Now the offense, who has some bright moments, you want to come in and uh, you know you're going to take a tough shot by the Seminole defense. And Kevin Thompson has a run for a score. His third touchdown of the season, and the only one this afternoon. He's on top of us in motion. He's back to pass. Pumps once, now has to get out of there. And gets a little bit of yardage. Jamal Reynolds wrestled him down after he got across the line of scrimmage to the 16 yard line. Check the pocket. Get a little twist up front. <laughs> Boy, that's a what. It can get really tight. Yeah. Jamal Reynolds has been superb this afternoon. Theon Rackley helped out on the tackle. Second down. Call it nine. Back to throw, seven step drop. Thompson complete. He goes to his tight end, Dupree. Much yardage there, about three to the 19. Derek Gibson in on the tackle from Florida State. We've been waiting on Dupree to get a little more involved in this offense. Really, in the first half, they were trying to get things on the outside, and we saw Dupree, you know, with some space inside, but they never really looked his way. They throw it to him there for only the seventh time this season. And it'll be third down. We've seen him come up with some big ones. He just has some bad luck after catches. He makes a nice catch and yep. He's Definitely. had a hard time holding on. Third down and three for Duke after the 21. A couple extra yards there. Thompson with the pass. And this time he goes to Kennedy, his fullback, and he's out to the 29 yard line where he's picked up a first down. Mario Edwards in on the tackle. Clayton Kennedy, freshman from Detroit, making the reception. We have a player down. There's Dupree. Downfield to throw a block, and Dupree is down there, being attended to by the Duke training staff. Senior tight end from Sefner, Florida. First and ten for Kevin Thompson and the Duke Blue Devils at their own 29. And Herbal Jack has moved early before the play. The pass is going to be intended for Ben Watson, backup tight end. This is going to be against Duke. The snap and Flowers are going to be split out to the right side. Three wide receivers, including the tight end up. Kyle Moore is up to the wide side of the field. Pushing that way is Thompson, but he won't get this one away. When you see all four down linemen kind of get there right at about the same time, equal amount of pressure, a lot of that had to do with his coverage as well. I mean, the coverage sack. We talked with, uh, talk with Joe DeLamelo, the tight ends coach, and uh -huh. we talked about what Florida State does with their defensive front four. It's not very complicated. They don't mess around. No, they just said we are going after the quarterback. And they are going after him again. We haven't had a lot of those today, Steve. Nope. Reggie Durden. 
He's going to return. What a kick by Morton. And Durden. That hit him. That hit him. Yeah, he might have, and that's yeah. probably why he came back to take it. He thought of getting away from it. And Wentz is back at quarterback. The handoff now goes to Cheney. Jeff Cheney. Brought down Jeff by Cheney. Quentin Holly and Mike Receivers out. Wanky to pass. Yeah. Pass is tipped and it's intercepted. And taken by Darius Clark. Clark pushed out of bounds at the 31, the 32 yard line. And it's the third interception of the second half. And now every Florida State quarterback has shared in They just continue to compete. And there's a, you know, the ball is tipped, and you get up, you want to catch it at its highest point, you know, and be an athlete. I know Clark is a heck of a player. Second week in a row that he's had two picks. Got it against Vanderbilt last week. Two more here against Florida State. And the Duke offense is back out on the field. And they're in Florida State territory at the 33. Flowers and Montgomery are split wide to the right. Hurdle Jack to the left for Kevin Thompson. Short drop. The pass deflected. And it's deflected there by Alonzo Jackson. Number 48, Alonzo Jackson. For number 30, Devin Pierce. Devin Pierce, the intended receiver out of the fullback Second spot. And 10 at the 33. Duke's got to, you know, just try to maintain some balance. You need to play now a key breaker because they're just teeing off now. And maybe you, you run a draw, you, you do something to try to pop one past them or take a shot downfield. We haven't heard Montgomery, or really, we haven't heard Flowers mentioned lately. No. Nope. Montgomery is the outside receiver to the top of the screen. Kevin Thompson here looking at second and ten for the Florida State 33. He'll keep it on the ground. Wayne Epperson runs into Theon Rackley. Derek Gibson in there on the stop as well. It's a gain on the play of three to the 30. Tackled at the 30 yard line by Theon Rackley. Third down and seven. Derek Gibson. Out on the tackle there. Third down coming, 51 13. Florida State in the lead, but Bobby Bowden is not happy with the way things have gone in the second half. Three interceptions, one fumble, only one touchdown in the second half after putting 44 points on the board in the first half. Blitz is on, getting rid of it is Thompson, intended for Montgomery. And that was a safety blitz coming in there with Sean Key. At least they were this time, they were all on the same page. Remember last time they ran this and he had no help. So you have to sense it. It's there now. Get it up and out of there. If you get it, if you throw it a little sooner, you can put a little more air on it, and then Scotty can make an adjustment. He did well enough to avoid the sack and the interception. And Sims Lenhart is on for his third field goal of the day. And this will be his longest attempt of the afternoon. He's hit from 46 and 47. This is 48. He's hit all nine of his field goal attempts of the year. Here comes the kick. It is up. And it is good. It's good. Sims Lenhart, 48 yards, one shy of his season high. And the Duke Blue Devils cash in on their third interception of the second half, trailing 51-16. Head to Wake Forest. Wake Forest, Maryland. Here comes Lenhart. Kick will send Gardner three yards deep and he'll come out. Block the point of attack with good penetration by Duke to knock him down at the 14 yard line. Let's look at Florida State in the second half. Bob Trott will look at his defensive unit and he'll say, When you go to Virginia, remember what you did here. They've held Florida. And Marcus Alpson is back in at quarterback. To the Florida State quarterbacks, Jared Jones, Chris Swanky, and Marcus Outson have thrown interceptions. Outson off the carry, over the 20, up to the 22. Marcus Todd Delamalore on the tackle. You recognize that name, his father, Joe Delamalore, six time All Pro, oh boy, offensive line. Amen, amen. Look right at the center, Eric Thomas. And off for the first down. Are you Scott Snyder? Is he moonlighting? Isn't one job enough? First and ten from the 27-yard line. Here comes the pitch, and it's Cheney looking for light at the corner. Lamar Grant will steer him out of bounds. It's good D. At the 29-yard line. 
Gain of about two. Good defense. Olamar Grant, man, you know, for his first game back, he has been active. He, uh, you know, when you when a young man is disciplined, giving up a big gain, he took the 15 instead. Hobson, hand off to Cheney, hit in the backfield, and a great hit there by Charles Porter. Soft down and 12 to the loss of two. Florida stayed up big here, 51 16. And uh, this is tomorrow. I believe it's a good breakfast, though. Bobby's around. Yep. Another handoff that goes for very Mississippi State has Vanderbilt scoreless. And Michigan continues to solidify their hold. Michigan State romping over Iowa. And here's Keith Cockrell's kick. Little Jack will watch it go out of bounds at the 44 yard line. Timeout on the field with five. They start their Seminole fans young and they keep them a long time, longevity. You see them all over the city of Jacksonville, the jewel of the first coast of Florida. Saw a nice shot just a moment ago of the landing area right around along the St. John's River here in Jacksonville. It's full of a lot of people, and we were among them last night. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. First and ten, Duke. Oh. Duke has had uh, some pretty good field position. They've started three drives in the second half in Florida State territory. Here's Thompson. Pass to Hartopolis is complete. And he's in FSU territory. Real nice little timing play. Slant. Kevin Thompson's done a pretty good job here. He's had some good opportunities. Four turnovers have helped his cause. Giving him good field position. Three wide outs for him now here on first and ten at the Florida State 42. Thompson back to throw the pass is bobbled there should have been caught by Devin. Pierce. Yeah, Devin had had a little green out in front of him. Start, start guys been hit all day. because he can sense it. Second down coming here and ten from the 42, Florida State. And Thompson, the handoff goes to Epperson, and Epperson gets. Down six for Duke. Pass to the flats is complete for the tight end Watson, and he's driven out of bounds just after he picked. It was a good recognition. He saw it. He tossed the ball out and moved the chains. That's what Paul Franks had hoped the Blue Devils would do in the first half. Three wide outs again for Thompson. First and ten. Thirty-one. And off now goes to Epperson. He picks his way back to the hole, but it is driven back by Leon Lackley. At the 30 yard line, they'll give him a gain of one. And uh, now he's down. Second down. Thompson throws to throw, throws to Pierce. He catches this one, has the first down inside the Florida State 20. Flyer in on the tackle, along with Tay Cody. And it's down to the 17. But when you get the two outside guys with speed like Montgomery and Flowers, it opens up some things for the tight end and back. And this is real simple. He's shown a knack now to find the sweet spot, made up for that earlier drop, and he has become quite productive. 14 yards on the play, in fact, down to the 17. Thompson on the quick count. Throws, and it's complete. Touchdown to Richmond Flowers. The defender fell down on the play, and Flowers was there wide open at the pylon. Love the floating pocket. Get out on the edge when you play in a team like Florida State. Try to pin some of those werewolves inside, and this is just an athlete making a play on the ball. Let's see what happens. Yep, get a little stumbling going on there. Darden couldn't couldn't save it, and that's why you play the game. Kevin Thompson's fifth career touchdown pass. Here's the extra point by Sims Lenhart. It is good. And the Blue Devils with a measure of pride here. Hit 23 points on the scoreboard. Nobody scored as much against the Florida State since Georgia Tech. We'll be back after these messages from your local ACC station. Kevin Thompson. And this is going to be Nick Maddox, five yards deep. Maddox, the true freshman from the state of North Carolina, surges up over the 20 yard line of 23. Punting unit is on again. And we've got a new punter here for Florida State, so. Should be Randy Golightly, freshman from Tallahassee. Keith Cockrell has seen the end of his day. Ronnie Hamilton is back to the seat. Hamilton brought 
down there in no man's land down to the five yard line. 39 yard punt by Go Lightly. This game today. This is going to be a win. Duke will put some points on the board though. They got Miami at home, Wake Forest at home, then at Clemson. Big game, father son battle at Virginia, Maryland, and Florida. It's a tough way home for Florida State. Really. No, it is. They're going to have to climb it, but they're accustomed to it. Yep. That's how you build. You know, number one team in the nation. We're going to go out and prove it every week. Octavius Wilkes gets the handoff. You know, that brings to mind they had a schedule one time in the month of October back in night into the ACC. And he did it by playing a lot of days on the road in lonely places like Ann Arbor, Michigan. That's how you can get only in front of 107,000 people. Well, players like to play in big games. So when you're recruiting, you can tell a young fella, hey, we're going to this in Jacksonville on a neutral site. Really pick up an additional home game. And you also have to win a few of those <laughs> games on the road. They did. Oh, yeah. They did. They won their share. So that's why they're the best program in, in the country as far as record of the night. Last play of the game right here. And that'll pretty much do it. Latavius Wilkes carries inside the five, and Florida State wins it. 51-23. Next week will be from Winston-Salem.